Then I think probably one of the other interesting features of Hong Kong and, and its economy, because Hong Kong was a very poor place. It was never intended to, to become anything other than a, a sort of trading center. And the British government wasn't particularly interested in it, certainly not in the same way that they might have been interested in, in India uh, or any of the other colonies. Hong Kong is very special and very different. Nobody wanted Hong Kong, essentially. I mean, not like, uh, even the British government was not very interested. Not the way they might be interested in, say, India or any of the other colonies. Well, there were no resources here, I mean, no, no indigenous resources. If you wanted and needed something, if you needed a, a tram line, a bus transportation, um, gas, electricity, ferries, private enterprise had to do this. If you want a tram line, you must put it in. If you want electric power stations, you must build them. <laughs> Telephones the same, gas the same, the tunnels under the harbor all the same. Not built by government, all built by private enterprises. Let them climb. Well, so many people who, can, who can't afford the luxury. But in Hong Kong, the only way out is you work hard, amass your money, speculate on a couple of property markets, uh, property, properties in the market, and climb up the social ladder, and eventually you belong to the class that owns a backyard of luxury, such as uh, uh, Thailand right? and, and Japan. You'll be amazed to see at Christmas so many people just flee Hong Kong and then escape to Hokkaido. Last Christmas, the air tickets were so expensive. Virtually every middle-class family was talking about spending the Christmas in Hokkaido, having spa, sauna, and do skiing. <laughs> that is what you call the luxury. Or in summer, we can go to uh, Thailand. This is, what, this is the geographic advantage of Hong Kong. 